So Charlie Kirk uh, discussed Biden's withdrawal from Afghanistan. Now, Charlie's one of these people who says he's anti-war and said he agreed with Trump on withdrawing from Afghanistan. Now, all of a sudden, he's not, uh, doesn't seem to be so much in favor of getting out. So let's see what he has to say. Take a look. President Joe Biden's Department of Defense will accept 30,000 Afghan refugees in the military installations following the collapse of Kabul. Boom. Political transformation. Let the country crumble. Do you know there's 5 million displaced people in Afghanistan now? This was all intentional. Joe Biden let it fall apart to now say, oh, I'm so sorry. I guarantee you Joe Biden's speech this afternoon will talk about refugee assistance and relocation support. Now, Joe Biden's going to be scrambling to make good on it, and the liberal media will love it. They'll say, oh, yes, okay, now I get it. Joe Biden is now fixing his own problem. Joe Biden is stepping up, and he's allowing a flow of people from the Middle East into America. Thank you, Joe Biden. You're such a hero. You're so benevolent. You're so respectful. You're so compassionate. Do you see what's going on here? What's going on here is Joe Biden wants a couple hundred thousand more Elon Omars to come into America to change the body politic permanently. We're playing checkers, and they're playing chess. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. By the way, you know who made the argument that we should be accepting these refugees right now? Donald Trump. He released a statement saying, uh, this is so incompetent, how could you withdraw without getting out the people who've been very good to America? They're allowed and they should be able to seek refuge. Trump said that. By the way, he says Biden's going to let in 30,000 of them. There's 88,000 of them. If he's letting in 30,000 of them, that's conservative. That's a conservative number. Trump was saying nominally, hey, we got all the people who've been good to America should be able to come here. That's 88,000. God, oh God, this is so, like, he's obviously has a narrative. He's trying to create, you know, a, an argument on this, but it's so utterly made up. He says, quote, this was all intentional. This was all intentional? You think this is going how Biden wanted it to go? You think it's going how Biden wanted it to go? His approval rating is dropping. And by the way, Charlie Kirk is wrong about everything he said there. He goes, oh, Biden's speech will be about refugees and the media will love it. Biden didn't even mention refugees in his speech and the media didn't love it. The only person defending him over the speech is me. Because he made the case to get out of Afghanistan. We should have gotten out of Afghanistan. He said, I accept responsibility. And he said, listen, the, what do you want me to tell you? The Afghan government ran away and a lot of the 300,000 people we armed didn't want to fight. So he gave facts and everybody's like, oh, he's finger pointing and blaming other people. And yeah, Jesus Christ, this is terrible. This, what, a, what a mistake. What a debacle. So he didn't speak about refugees in the speech and the media didn't love it. You're wrong about all that stuff. And if you think this is intentional, then what you're saying is Biden wanted his approval rating to drop below 50% for the first time. What a monumental moron. I mean, all everything he said there was false. You think 30,000 refugees is going to, quote, change the body politic? How? How? How's that? What are you talking about? How? Even if they all moved to, like, Wyoming, even then it probably wouldn't change the body politic. If they all got went to Wyoming and then, oh, they could, we could get a Democratic senator from Wyoming. Even that probably wouldn't happen. 30,000 is not going to be a game changer. What are you talking about? Imagine thinking this is how Biden wanted it to go. <laughs> so, but listen, final point, and this is the most important point, and I'm going to keep stressing this. Charlie Kirk used to say, I agree with Trump, we should get out of Afghanistan. What are we doing? Wasting trillions of dollars there, and, you know, um, it's only enriching the military industrial complex, and let's do America first. So Biden actually does America first, and he's like, not like that. Not like that. He wants to let in 30,000 Ilhan Omars. Trump wants to let in 88,000 of them. So on that point, who would be further left? Charlie, does Trump want to remake the body politic to help Democrats? No, of course not. Uh, I mean, it's so like, the fact I even have to respond to this is ridiculous. Th by the way, he thinks this is like edgy and subversive. No, honestly, what's edgy and subversive is being president of the United States and putting your middle finger up to Raytheon, Boeing, Halliburton, KBR, um, Honeywell, all of the defense contractors who've gotten phenomenally wealthy 
off of this, putting your middle finger up to the NSA and the CIA and the FBI, putting your middle finger up to leadership of your party, to leadership of the other party, even the people who are supposed to be allies like Rand Paul and Matt Gates on Afghanistan, nowhere to be found. I've seen like one or two Democratic Congress people express tepid agreement with Joe Biden. Everybody else is shitting on him. This takes courage. This takes courage. So many elites made so much money off of this war. And Biden's like, the gravy train is stopping. We're getting out. That takes courage. That's subversive. That's edgy. I'm astounded that Joe Biden followed through with it. I really am. I really am. Especially because we know there's trillions of dollars in mineral wealth in Afghanistan, and that has something to do with it. The opium, that has something to do with it. In Iraq, it's, it's oil. Keeping China and Russia at bay, this all has something to do with it. The profits of the so-called defense contractors, that has something to do with it. And he's like, I don't care. I don't agree. I don't think we should be there. We're getting out. That's edgy. That's subversive. That's courageous. That's brave. Would I have done some things differently? Yes. It's easy for me to say it now, though, because I wasn't in Biden's shoes. I didn't have the intelligence he had. Maybe he was lied to, or maybe he was misled. But I would have tried to get out those 88,000 people, and I would have tried to do it sooner. He didn't. He didn't get him out. That's the one fair criticism of him. But Charlie Kirk is acting like Biden did already get out 30,000. He got out 2,000. So he's criticizing him for something he didn't even do yet. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. There is no... They're all going to attack him no matter what. They're all going to attack him no matter what. On the, on the broader point, he's correct. He got it right. And almost nobody is saying that. And it's pathetic. It's pathetic. Everybody who said they were anti-war, and now when Biden actually ends one, they're not defending him. They're not really anti-war. They're just political hacks, and they're posturing, and that's clear.